Hey everyone, it's Leanne here. Welcome to another video on my YouTube channel. Today I'm going to show you how to create a watercolor card using stamps. And these stamps are designed to give a watercolor effect. And the stamps are from Art Impression. So I'm going to go over the tools that you'll need to create this card. I'm starting with a round paintbrush. Any size will do. I'm using a zero here. You'll want to have a piece of um, paper towel and a water um, vessel as well, something to put your brush into. Uh, the stamp set that I'm using is called Flowering Mailbox, and as I mentioned, it's from Art Impressions. And it comes with a mailbox, a cute little bird, a foliage stamp, and a flower stamp. And you'll need an acrylic block for the stamps as well. Now the stamps look like this, and they're a rubber stamp. They have a sticky back. Um, backing on them that you can peel off and then replace the cover on the backing to keep them for future use. You'll need some water soluble ink and I'm using Distress Inks from Tim Holtz. I picked up a pack of the Distress markers and then I'm also going to substitute out the blue for the Distress Ink pad on the right. So the colors I'm using in the Distress colors are Dusty Concord, Forest Moss, Fired Brick, Spiced Marmalade, and Chipped Sapphire. So I'm just preparing the stamps here and I'm peeling off the backing and I'll put that on my acrylic block. And for the paper, I'm using a watercolor paper. I just picked up a Strathmore pad from Michaels and I cut it down to an A2 cardstock and cut off a one inch by one inch off the dimension. So it creates um, a half inch border around the perimeter of the card. Now I'm using Distress Inks and I'm using the Distress Ink pad here. So I've inked up the stamp and I'm going to stamp it once on my paper towel before I take it to my work surface just because the ink pad has more of a concentration of pigment so I don't want to put it down too heavy. So I've sped this up here so we can see all the techniques and procedures that go into um, blurring the lines. So what you'll want to do is dip your brush in the water and you'll want to pinch the water off. You want to make sure that it's not wet but it's damp and then very gently if you rub along the lines of the stamp that you've stamped, you'll want to just use that to pull in some pigment from those lines to color in the stamp. You don't want to completely blur the lines. You want to make sure that you leave some defining edges because that does create the shape of the image that you have created and you don't want to lose that definition. But just borrowing a little pigment from those lines and pulling it down with your, um, your damp brush into the colored area. And so this creates the watercolor effect. Once I've finished coloring on all of the mailbox, I'm going to come back with a little more ink and just accentuate the shadows a little bit. So what I've done is put an extra dab of ink on my acrylic block and I'm just tapping into that with my brush and I'm just putting a little more ink down in those shadows to create a bit more dimension and depth in the coloring here. The inside of the mailbox is going to be quite dark so I put the most ink in that area. And then just thinking about where the shadows would be underneath the mailbox, underneath the edge of the base that's holding the mailbox, and then underneath the platform as well on the post. So just adding those shadows where I think they should be, and that helps kind of add a little more pop to it and make it feel a little more three-dimensional. So once I have that done, I'm going to come in and do the bird next, and I'm going to use the same color that I used for the mailbox, and this is the Distress Ink Pad in Chipped Sapphire. I'm going to stamp that off on my paper towel once again, because it is more of a, a concentration of pigment in the ink pad, so I don't want to put too much down. So I'm just coming in, and this one actually stamped a little light, so I'm blending the edges and filling in the gaps of the edges with my brush, and just pulling all of that ink along the line to create a solid line before I begin my coloring. So once I have that ready, I'm just coming in again and blurring the lines like I did in the mailbox, pulling a little pigment out from the lines and the edges to fill in the coloring here. And so I'm going to use the red color from the Distress Marker Pack, and this is Fired Brick. And I'm just putting a little bit on my acrylic block. I'm going to color my bird red and also color the flag on the mailbox red. So it only takes a little bit of distress ink. You don't have to use a lot to get a lot of blend out of the color. I found that the shadow areas weren't quite as dark as I wanted, so I came right in with the marker and very lightly drew a few little tips. And then I came in with my damp brush and blurred those out. And that created more of the shadow. And that's sort of what I did with the mailbox too, but in reverse, I'm just using a marker to add that directly to the paper instead of putting it on my acrylic block. 
To do the beak and to accentuate the legs on the bird, I'm using the yellow here from that pack, and that's called Spiced Marmalade. And I'm just slightly blurring that out. They're not big areas, so it doesn't take a lot to blend them. Now I'm going to add the flowers, and I'm going to use Dusty Concord. This is the purple. One of the techniques that Art Impressions recommends is when you're doing flowers, you stamp in a little circle and you stamp five times. And so what this does is it gives you a variance. It creates a depth of field so that you feel that there's more definitive flowers and less definitive flowers in the background. And it creates more uh, depth overall because you're getting a more concentrated stamp. And by the end of your five stamps, it's a weaker concentration. So it feels like it's um, further behind those flowers. So you can create a nice cluster and give it a three-dimensional look. Now for the foliage, you can stamp that a few times as well. I didn't do five, I did about three in each area. And for the foliage behind the bird, I only colored the top part of that leaf because I wanted the leaf to be coming out from behind the mailbox. You could also mask off the mailbox and stamp the entire leaf as well so it's not stamped over top. Um, or you can use the technique that I did and just ink the top part of, of the foliage and just stamp it behind the bird there. So here I'm coming in with my damp brush and the exact same technique is used for everything. You just sort of dance along the lines and pull out some pigment to fill in around these shapes and to soften the parts that you've stamped, but being careful not to erase your edges. So you want to leave some defining edges. I found with the foliage it was um, good to do a variance. So I made sure that some lines were very crisp and then other lines were a little bit more blurred and that gave more depth as well and gave more of a three-dimensional look. So here I'm just coming back in with the, um, the chip sapphire color to add a little bit more definition to my little bird, just to accentuate some of those shadows. And you'll find that this technique is actually pretty easy to do and it's super fun. I think I probably fiddled with this a little more than I needed to, but I really enjoyed working with this. So what I'm doing now is I'm pulling a little bit of pigment out into the empty areas. And so this is just grounding the image to the, um, to the paper. So you see a little bit of the blue, um, kind of like a halo around the artwork. So I'm coming in with a micron pen to sign my work because it is something I created. Um, and I'm using a 005, so very fine. And I've signed my name. And so to finish off the card, I'm coming in with Wilted Violet, and that's the color of this Distress ink pad, and doing some very fine blending on the edge of the base of my card. I found that this color was a nice complement to the colors I used in the watercolor, and so it's going to create the border for my card. So I'm just very gently um, blending this and not making it perfect, because watercolor is sort of a lot of lights and darks and brush strokes, and so I wanted that look and feel to match. My scene when I laid it down was a little bit to the right of my um, artwork base, so I'm just trimming off the top and the left side edge to center the artwork more in the page. So you'll see once I get these two trimmed off, it looks more centered. And this also creates a bigger border for my card, so more of the wilted violet shows around the edges, and I thought that was a nice compliment. So I'm just centering this here, and I'm going to come in with my tape roller, very simple. I'm going to outline each of the edges here and then just put an X across the background to add the tape. You could also use foam tape here as well. I think that would also be a nice addition. So I'm just eyeballing it up, making sure it's centered and pressing it into place everywhere where I put tape. And there you have it. This is my super fun watercolor card using the Art Impression Stamp Set Flowering Mailbox. I hope you guys enjoyed this video. If you did, be sure to give it a thumbs up and subscribe so you're notified the next time I post a video. Thanks so much for watching.